All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Markak, Vadash. Double honors to the apostles and those of great millstone that tell us this truth, and much respect to the Yaki and within his work, and also to the believers set across the four corners of the earth, the whole elect, to USA, Shalom. So, yeah, this lesson right here is going to be geared towards the Lord. Further glorifying his holy name, Yahweh Bashim al Shah, and uh, what's going to be phase two of his spiritual powers shown in the field school. You know, right now we're in stage one or phase one of the spiritual powers being shown through the preaching of the word. And with the preaching of the word, you know, uh, the Lord is raising up the dead spiritually. All right, he is healing the sick, he is cleaning the lepers. And he is feeding the poor. And that's all been done through the men that you see been raised up. All right. Preaching his word. So this is the first uh, stage of spiritual powers that's going to manifest into the fiscal. And that's why when you get in the book of Psalm 110 and 3, it says, Thy people shall be willing in a day of thy power. All right. And this is speaking about the majority of the elect. Who are going to flock unto the power of Yahweh by Shema Shah is going to be shown. It has happened in times past. And it's going to happen during this time. Just on a more grander scale. Alright. So these are things that we got to expect. As we see the society, you know, collapse. The food becomes scarce. The water becomes scarce. The Lord is, you got to understand that the Lord is setting the stage. You know, for these things to take place. You see. And so... Let's get, what is it, Ezekiel? So Ezekiel 36, and um, we start at verse 23. Now he says, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh, by Shema Shah, saith the Lord Power, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So how is the Lord going to be sanctified? It's going to be done through you, the man that he has raised up, all right, as vessels to glorify his holy name. And that's what you see currently, all right? But it's only going to increase, as I was saying before. So we have to expect these things to happen, all right? So for now, let's go to um, Isaiah, the 49th chapter. So Isaiah 49 and 1, it says, Listen, O owls, all right, unto me, and hearken ye people from far, because we've been scattered. The Lord Yahweh have called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name, all right, the predestinated ones. All right, going back to what Jeremiah, he was chosen from the womb, and the Lord put his words within his mouth. So the same with us. So it says, um, verse 2, And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. Going back to Hebrews 4 and 12, all right, the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharpening any two-edged sword. So the man that the Lord has raised up and has put his words within that mouth that made like unto a sharp sword, all right, a weapon. So it says, in the shadow of his hand have he hid me and made me a polished shaft and his quiver have he hid me and said unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. You see? So he's going to use his servants to be glorified, the ones that he has put his words within that mouth that has been made likened unto a sharp sword. Alright? And so they're glorifying the Lord right now and it's going to manifest into the physical. And uh, our Lord Yahweh Shah, let's see, gave commission unto his disciples who later became, you know, apostles to go out and perform miracles. So let's get this real quick. Mark 16. And we start at verse 16. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs or miracles shall follow them that believe. So it says, In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now all these acts happen. Now, all these signs happen to the uh, disciples, the apostles, okay? And we're going to get one account 
with Apostle Peter and what he did that drawed in a multitude. Now, Matthew 10 and verse 7, speaking to his disciples, he says, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay? Freely as you have received, freely give. So the Lord gave permission unto his men to go out and do these miracles. And this is what they actually did. You know, and we're doing it right now through the spirit. But as I said before, we're going to see it in the physical. Just like with Peter, who raised the dead in the book of, um, I think it's the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. And, uh, yeah, 32. Yeah, so Acts 9 and 32, the title reads, Peter heals Aeneas and raises Dorcas. So it says, Meanwhile, Peter traveled from place to place, and he came down to visit the believers in the town of Lydda. There he met a man named Aeneas who had been paralyzed and bedridden for eight years. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Yahushua Hamashiach heals you. Get up and roll up your sleep, sleeping mat. And he was healed instantly. So just imagine someone who was bedridden for eight years. All of a sudden, through the names of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, all right, arose immediately. <laughs> okay, what's that gonna cause? It's gonna cause a lot of a lot of attention. 35 says, then the whole population, look at that, the whole population of Lydda and Sharon saw Aeneas walking around and they turned to the Lord. That's the point. They saw him walking around and they turned to the Lord. So the whole population <laughs> during that time saw the miracles of Yahweh Bashim al Shah and what they repented. They believe and they turn to Yahweh Bashimon Shah. So what, how much more in these times? You see? So 36, there was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in the Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. It says about this time she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydia, so they sent two men to beg him please come as soon as possible so peter returned with them and as soon as he arrived they took him up to the up uh, they took him to the upstairs room the room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes dorcas had made them but peter asked them all to leave the room then he knelt and prayed turning to the body he said get up tabitha and she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then he called in the widows and all the believers. And he presented her to them alive. So after that, what happened? The news spread throughout the whole town. And many believed in the Lord. And as we get in Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written in four time, you know, we're written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right. So in these times, you're going to have men raising up the dead, you know, healing the lepers in the physical as we're doing it spiritually, you know, and the Lord is setting the stage for that. So these are the things that we have to believe from the scriptures. And Yahweh Shai, you know, through his father is able to do all things. Hebrews 6, you know, Hebrews 11 And six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the most high, Yahweh, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right. You must believe that he is. He is capable of doing all things, man. All right. And he will do these miraculous acts uh, once again on a more grander scale. See? So, Lord willing, uh, that was edifying. Until next time, I say, Shalom.